In an era of a great, great king named Dhulqarnayn. Dhulqarnayn, the man of the two horns. He was called that name because he used to wear a, a hat that had two horns coming out of it. Dhulqarnayn was an extremely powerful king and he was a worshipper of Allah, a righteous, just Muslim king among the best that ever existed on earth. And he had so much power, so much authority that his kingdom reached almost the whole world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Dhulqarnayn in Surah Al-Kahf. It speaks about Dhul Qarnayn as being that king. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him, as I said, as a just and fair leader who used to say, whoever does good, then we will reward him. And whoever does wrong, then we will punish him. A punishment in this earth and in the hereafter will be punished by his Lord, a punishment that is unheard of. So he was very strict on laws, that laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And he was very rewarding and generous for those who do good. So everybody loved him. And he brought justice this way. Very harsh on the wrong and very generous on the good. Allah tells us about Dhul Qarnayn describing his amount of kingdom, saying that Dhul Qarnayn, he reached a very far distance in land, traveling the world and applying justice and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere he went. So Allah describes one of his journeys by saying that he went one time to establish justice. Allah says in the Quran, when he reached the place of the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a murky pond or in a murky water. So it's what the eye sees. Allah says when he reached where it seemed like the sun was setting. In other words, Allah is telling us, Idul Qarnayn reached a very, very far end of the world. He said he found it setting in a murky pond, meaning it looked like as if it was setting inside the ocean and it looked murky to him. Meaning there was no more land beyond where he reached. Meaning Dhul Qarnayn reached the farthest land where nobody could reach even further. There was no more civilization after there. He said he found people there. He found there people that could hardly understand normal speech, very primitive in speech. They said, Ya Dhul Qarnayn, O oh Dhul Qarnayn, they knew he was the king. Can you please help us? Ya Juj and Ma'juj, they are corruptors on earth. Now I want you to analyze with me over here. These people who are complaining to Dhul Qarnayn, they were very primitive in lifestyle and in language. So he reached the border of the world where civilization was so behind. And they were trying to explain to him about this other civilization that were even worse than them. Allah says, then Dhul Qarnayn took a pathway. When he reached between two dams that blocked between two city or a village or a town. These people could hardly understand normal speech. They said, oh, Dhul Qarnayn, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are very corruptive on earth. They kill, they take, they steal, they do all these things. Can we give you some help, bring you some people to help you do what? So that we can help you to make a barrier between us and them so that they can't come to us and they can be cut off from the world. Then Dhul Qarnayn replies, he said, Allah has already given me enough power. I don't need your help. Thank you for offering. But what I want you to help me with is just a little bit of starting off the foundations of the wall. I'll make between you and them a wall. Bring me some of your Zubar al-Hadid. It's a kind of metal like brass, very strong metal that can withhold any kind of environment, climate change. He built it in such a way, he said, that he ordered for them to blow heat. So he melted it and molded it in such a way that it became so solidified, so strong through heat and through steel melting because of fire. He said, bring me this other type of material that I may add to it that will make it extra strong. He built a wall or a barrier or a dam, something that was so strong, so impermeable that nothing can reach and nothing can come, nothing can break it down anymore. No climate, no people, no weaponry, nothing. Allah says in the Quran, no one was able to break through it and no one was able to overpower it. And when Dhul Qarnayn looked at the people, they looked at this wall and they said, wow, this is a very strong wall. And Dhul Qarnayn wanted to teach them a lesson. Finally, he said, this is from the mercy of my Lord, that he allowed us to prevent you from the corruption of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. He said, now, this, is, this wall has been built there, it's strong. This is a mercy from your Lord for now. But when the promise of my Lord has arrived, Allah has decreed something that's gonna happen. Allah will make this wall destroyed. He will destroy it, meaning it will be level with the ground. The promise of my Lord is truly going to come, no doubt. What is he saying here? He's saying that Yajuj and Maju will be blocked off the world, from the world, until a certain time that is gonna come. Allah, it is only Allah who will destroy it, it will allow for this wall to be destroyed. And when it is destroyed, this Yajuj and Maju will come out. 
Allah says, and so we left them, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. We left them. And we left the people like this in this way, Ya'juj and Ma'juj away from the people, and they living among one another. Allah says, but we will surely bring everyone, including Ya'juj and Ma'juj, everyone back when the trumpet is blown. So no one has been able to break through this wall ever since. And Allahu A'lam, if anybody has ever reached that place. But if you want to know where it is, from the tafsir that I've read, and Allah knows best, of course, they indicate that their, situ their position is somewhere near the upper part of the world, towards the North Pole, towards the Russian areas, Russian areas in that sort of region, higher up towards the North Pole area. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best exactly where they are.